indicated, 360 soil scan unit can be utilized right in the box or for convenience, we're gonna go ahead and take it out so that we can show you exactly where to put the, the power plug in. It is a fully self-contained unit. With it comes the uh, distilled water solution. And actually back here is where the plug-in is. And so we are going to go ahead and demonstrate plugging the unit in. If it is plugged in, you will see a red light if you have power. Uh, there is an off-on switch back here. So if you are not getting the red light, see if uh, you can power on or toggle on that, that uh, off-on switch. But now you know that your unit does have power. And on the iPad, you have, should have the Apple app 360 soil scan. So that app is right here. By clicking on it, it will, it will automatically pair with the unit that is closest to it. So once you have it here, it may take just a couple minutes uh, to pair up so that the, the iPad is then associating with this unit here. So once you have it open, you need to make sure that uh, if you want, you can establish power to your iPad by connecting it right down here so you don't have to worry about your iPad running, running low on battery. And the first thing it's gonna to wanna to do is purge the unit. So that's what it's asking for, is make sure that you've got at least uh, a quarter of a tank of distilled water back here, and then it wants you to purge the unit. What that's doing is it's making sure that there's enough distilled water in the unit so that uh, when you go ahead and, and start your calibration, it has the exact amount of water in the cup. To put the Dixie cup this is the mixing unit here. We're going to establish the Dixie cup over that unit and go ahead and hit purge, purge the unit. Again, what it's doing, it's filling the cup to make sure that there are no air pockets in the tubing. So the unit is purged. Next step then, we'll hit next step, soak the sensor. What it's asking me to do is this is a storage sensor that you use for a temporary sensor overnight. This tip, ion tip, is very sensitive and must be kept uh, soaked at all times. So we're going to replace this uh, calibration solution with a known solution. This is uh, nitrate. This is 120 milliliters uh, of, uh, or basically parts per million of nitrate solution that we're going to be using. You make sure that that solution is mixed at all times. And then we're going to fill up our calibration bottle. And there is a fill line that we will fill it up to. We will place it on the sensor tip. And then we are going to hit calibrate. Now if you are just starting this, first thing in the morning, you will probably want to let that sit for about 20 minutes before you hit the calibration. That gives the tip plenty of time to soak in the ions. Uh, right now, since we've been using this machine all, uh, all morning, we're just going to go ahead and hit calibration. What the unit is doing right now, it is calibrating itself to that 20 parts per million. If there's something wrong with the unit, or for some reason, uh, the calibration uh, solution is um, got contaminated, it will give me an error message and tell me. And then I have the option of using a, a fresh calibration solution or, uh, or checking uh, through diagnostics to see what's going on with the unit. It is pretty self-explanatory. It really walks you through step by step what you need to do. So after the, the unit has calibrated itself, then it's going to actually walk you up to uh, the next step and it's going to ask you, do you want to do a soil test or do you want to do a water test, a tile water test? Uh, what we are going to do first is we will look at doing a soil test. 
So up here in the upper right hand corner, you'll press either water or soil. We're going to go with soil. So that changes the instructions a little bit. So what it's asking me to do now is uh, prepare the soil sample that we're going to be putting in for, for the unit. How I need to prepare it, all the supplies are actually in the unit itself. And I am going to take a Dixie cup. And the unit has its own tools. So we will look at a Dixie cup and placing two tablespoons of soil. Now, one of the key components of, of running this machine is to be sure that the samples are taken correctly and that the samples are stored correctly before we take the soil sample. So one of the things I do is when I take the soil sample, I keep it cool. Uh, same way with tile water. So either keep it in a refrigerator or bring it in in a cooler and keep it cool until you're ready uh, to actually take the sample. So I'm gonna take two level spoonfuls and place it in my Dixie cup and I'm going to want the soil mixture to be fairly mixed up, no big chunks in it. And actually, if you have a few big chunks, you might want to smash them up a little bit um, once it's actually in the Dixie cup. Okay, once that's there, I'm going to take this, place it on my mixing unit, and there's a little lip there that that Dixie cup fits up under and then uh, make sure that it's secure. Once it is, you go ahead and press next step. What is happening now, water's being put into the uh, Dixie cup at the exact same amount. Uh, you do not need uh, a certain percentage of moisture in your soil sample. Although if you have very high uh, soil moisture where the water's actually dripping out, then uh, the, the reading may not be quite as accurate. Now it's actually going through and mixing that soil sample to make sure that uh, everything is in suspension and it will thoroughly mix that sample up and uh, make sure that all of the ions are in suspension. At the same time, it is recalibrating that sensor. So we need to have that 20 parts per million sensing solution on the sensor and it is recalibrating right now to make sure and it will recalibrate with every uh, time you do a soil sample so it'll be critical to have that sensor uh, solution on there while it's doing this you can come up and you can add specific information if you want to put down the the farmer's name track number what the sample number is you can even put in a GPS number here uh, that you can refer to later. Okay, now that the, the um, soil sample is in solution, we need to remove the nitrate uh, calibrating solution. And the critical part here is to make sure that you clean the sensor after every operation. And this is really the critical part of using this, this machine. And this is where you can throw things off. What I'm cleaning it with is distilled water. This is really the brains of this whole system. You have to be, and it's also very delicate. So you need to be very careful with that sensor tip. You only blot, you never wipe and you also blot the bottom of the sensor. Okay, we remove the soil sample. It's all in solution now. And we're gonna place it underneath the sensor. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit, uh, hit the reading. Now, while this is calibrating and reading, it is basically reading the number of ions and it will continue to read that until it gets about 10 times uh, or 10 readings that are all the same. And once it's the same, and then it will uh, uh, spit out the, the readings. Right now, it's telling me I've got eight parts per million and it's, it's still running the sensor.
If you're doing several samples together, this is a good time now to clean this mixing unit. Make sure you get all the soil, all the contaminants off of this unit. You don't want to contaminate the next, the next uh, sample that you use. The calibration has been completed, and what it's telling me on the number of nitrates in that soil is about 10 parts per million. Um, again, you can put in all the, the information for the farm. You can export that to a, to a file. What we are recommending is, particularly if a producer does not want his data recorded, uh, we will have some uh, cards that he can write his information on and take it back out with him. Now, 10 parts per million at this time of year, which is the fall, is a good uh, number to have because we want to make sure that our nitri nitrogen, uh, we don't have excess nitrogen going into fall. So um, that's a good reading for this time of year. What we're going to be providing for you is there are some informational pamphlets that we can give the producer that in the spring of the year, if he wants to know what his readings are, he can go ahead and follow up with his uh, with extension or follow up with um, his crop consultant on the number of parts per million and and know from there whether he's got enough to get in to get his crop finished out or whether he's going to need to side dress some additional uh, nutri or nitrogen in there. Okay, uh, one final thing that we really need to make sure that we're doing is after we've done our soil uh, analysis. We want to make sure that sensor is cleaned off. So we are again going to take our distilled water and clean that sensor thoroughly, washing it down. Make sure we got all the soil off, including up underneath where the sensor would be. And again, just kind of pat it and don't rub. Damage. Once you have done that, be sure you place the calibration solution back up underneath there because we want to make sure that tip stays moist um, at all times. And when you store the unit, you will store it with that calibration unit or the calibration uh, cylinder on there. If you are going to be storing for a long extended period of time, greater than uh, you know two weeks, then there is a storage calibration unit that we will place on it. And what you will do is moisten the sponge underneath and you will screw this on up underneath there for a long-term storage. And then uh, when you're done with long-term storage, you will come out and put on the, the calibration solution. Okay, with this segment, we're gonna be talking about testing for tile water. Uh, if you've already have your unit out and been testing, one of the things it's going to ask you is, are you done for the evening or are you ready to test another sample? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say we're going to test another sample. And before we prepare that, it wants us to make sure that we've cleaned our, our sensor tip and had the calibration unit on it, which I've already done. So I am ready to go ahead and test another sample. Again, in the top right hand corner, it'll ask you, do you want to test soil or do you want to test water? In this case, we're going to go to soil, or I mean, sorry, we are going to go to water. Okay, one of the things that wants us to do is we need to get our sample. And again, with the, uh, with the water, it's probably more critical to make sure that the water is kept uh, cool because nitrate will volatilize fairly quickly so we took our sample and we actually took it last evening and I've had it in the refrigerator and then brought it in in a, uh, in a cooler here. We are going to fill it to within a half inch of the top. And when you fill these up, what you need to do is make sure you have a clean container. I've run these through a dishwasher. And then when you go down to take the, sil the tile water sample, you'll want to uh, rinse this jar out three times with the tile water and then take your sample. And then uh, again store it in a cool place. Once you have the sample water, 
you have another process that you need to go through and we are going to put in a known solution into that water and this basically provides the sensor enough ions that it can read. We will put in one milliliter using a little paillette. into that water solution. And we will now mix that. The next step is to add 0.5 milliliters of the ISA solution to the calibration solution that is sitting up underneath the sensor. Okay, while we are mixing, we want to calibrate the unit. So we're going to go ahead and hit next step. and it is now calibrating that unit while we're mixing this. As it calibrates, you can also be adding specific information for this sample. Landowner, where it was taken, etc. Okay, that unit is calibrated now. We're going to remove the known 20 part per million nitrate solution. We're going to rinse that monitor or the sensor tip again. We want to make sure that we get all of that solution off so it doesn't contaminate our sample. We will place our tile water sample up in here and then we're going to hit start the sample. Again the unit is going to be sampling it and it will continue to sample until it gets enough readings that it stabilizes. So at this point, we're already up to four parts per million. So this may take uh, you know, up to a minute and it could take up to 10 minutes, but in most cases I find it's usually done in, in one to two minutes. Okay, the calibration is done and right now the reading is at six, uh, six parts per million for tile water. Um, now that's all you need to do for the tile water. Once you have completed it, make sure you take the water off the, the sensor. Again, wash down that sensor good. Pat it dry. and replace it with the 20 parts per million calibration solution. At this point, you can say you're done for the day, or you can go ahead and test another sample. <music>